Okay, so let us do a 3 by 4 example. So, here your uh, matrix is um, 1 2 0 3, 2 3 0 3 and 1 1 1 2. So, in this example uh, what do we want to do? We want to uh, get what is the uh, nullity and a basis for the null space that is what we want to do. Okay, so, the augmented matrix is this. So, let us see what row reduction yields. So, row reduction is going to give me uh, 1 2 0 3 2 3 0 3 1 1 1 2 I wrote that matrix and as I commented in my previous slide I am going to drop the augmented part. Okay. So, if we do that uh, we have swept out our first column everything below that one. Uh, now, let us continue with uh, the process. So, we get we want a 1 in the 2 to th place if possible and indeed we can multiply the second row by minus 1 and obtain that. So, we get 0 1 uh, 0 3 in the second row everything else remains the same. So, let us continue the process this is the same matrix we had in the previous uh, slide. So, now let us uh, sweep everything below the second uh, in the second column below the 1. So, if you do that we get 1 2 0 3 0 1 0 3 0 0 1 uh, 2 and this is already in reduced not reduced in row echelon form, uh, but we can go ahead one step and do reduce to echelon form and if we do that we get 1 0 0 minus 3 0 1 0 3 0 0 1 2. Okay. So, we have reached our uh, matrix which is in reduced to echelon form. Now, let us ask what are the dependent and independent variables. The leading ones are in the first, second and third column that means x 1, x 2, x 3 are dependent variables that means x 4 is an independent variable. Okay, so, the independent variable is x 4, dependent variables are x 1, x 2, x 3. So, the nullity of A is 1, right? the nullity of A is 1, uh, because the nullity corresponds to the number of independent variables. And uh, what is the uh, null space of A? So, for the null space, we put the independent variables to be the t i's. In this case, there is only one independent variable. So, instead of putting t 1, I have put just called it t. So, put x 4 equals t. So, the equations from the row reduced echelon form are x 1 minus 3 x 4 is 0. So, here I am I am I am using the augmented matrix, right. So, I have this matrix 1 0 0 minus 3 0 1 0 3 and 0 0 1 2 and I am using the augmented matrix. Uh, so, if I call this r, I am using the augmented matrix R 0 and from there I am getting these equations. So, I get x 1 minus 3 x 4 is 0, x 2 plus 3 x 4 is 0 and x 3 plus 2 x 4 is 0 my bad. Okay. So, from here we get that x 1 must be 3 t by putting x 4 is t, uh, x 1 must be 3 t, x 2 is minus 3 t and x 3 is actually minus 2 t. So, now we know what is the general form of a solution, it is of the form so, 3 t minus 3 t minus 2 t and t and t varies over r. So, some possible uh, solutions are given by uh, let us say if you put uh, t equals 5 you get 15 comma minus 15 comma minus 10 comma uh, 5 or if you put uh, t equals 100 you get 300 comma minus 300 comma minus 200 comma 100 okay. uh, or you could of course, put t equals 0 also that is also a solution that is the trivial solution 0 0 0 0. Okay. Uh, so, actually other than the last one the 0 0 0 0 any of these we could have chosen as a basis vector, but uh, just to follow our procedure we put t equals 1. So, t equals 1 yields the basis vector 3 minus 3 minus 2 1. So, basis for the null space of this matrix is just the single basis vector 3 minus 3 minus 2 1. Uh, so, you can check that this this is actually inside your um, null space by multiplying this to a uh, on the right of course, as a column uh, and seeing that the result is 0. Fine. So, we have uh, done these two examples of, uh, of uh, computing the nullity of a matrix and the null space of a matrix and its uh, basis. Fine. So, now, let us uh, take a step back and, and uh, 
and ask what did we exactly do. So, we found a general solution for the system of linear equations A x equals 0 and then we uh, put the t i's to be uh, uh, 1 and everything all the other t j's to be 0 and each such will give you uh, a basis vector. This is the main point, the main idea. Fine. So, let us uh, do some observations and these observations are going to yield a theorem which is called the rank nullity theorem. So, what is the rank nullity theorem? So, let A be an m by n matrix. So, recall that the row rank of A is the dimension of the row space of A and the column rank of A is the dimension of the column space of A. So, what do we mean by the row space of A? It is the vector space or the subspace of uh, R n if it is a m by n matrix of R n uh, which is uh, spanned by the rows of A which we treat as vectors. And what is the column space of uh, A? It is a subspace, it is the subspace of R m which is uh, given as the span of the columns of A, meaning you treat each column as a vector in R m and uh, that span is going to give you the column space. So, recall that these are equal this is something I stated, but did not prove and uh, they are denoted by rank of A. So, the rank of A is any one of these two uh, either the uh, row rank or the column rank because they are both the same. So, we used uh, uh, in the previous video we used uh, the fact that rank of A is the same as the row rank to compute this rank. How did we do that? We said you take this matrix A you do row reduction and once you do row reduction you look at the non zero rows of this matrix and the number of non zero rows is exactly the rank of A. So, re recall uh, this if you do not remember. So, now this is the important point. So, note that for a matrix R in row echelon form. So, suppose you have a matrix which is in row echelon form the number of non zero rows is the same as the number of dependent variables. Okay. How do we get this? Each non zero row has a leading one because it is in uh, row echelon form and each leading one that corresponding column corresponds to a dependent variable. So, the non zero rows correspond to the leading ones correspond to the non uh, the uh, columns with leading ones correspond to the dependent variables. Okay, that is how uh, this correspondence is. So, the non number of non zero rows is the same as the number of dependent variables. Uh, of course, dependent variables where because we, there is no system of equations in this place. So, as I said here you think of the in your mind you think of the system of linear the homogeneous system of linear equations R x equals 0. So, you have this matrix A you row reduce it to R think of the system of equations R x equals 0, think of how many dependent variables there are that is exactly the same as the number of non zero rows that is what we are saying. And what is the number of non zero rows that is the same as the rank of the matrix A. Why is that the case by the way? Because remember that in the previous video we have seen that if you have a spanning uh, set for a vector space you put those in into your matrix as a uh, as rows, but in this case we have already done that that matrix is is uh, by by construction that we started with the rows are the vectors which span the row space right. So, that is how we uh, obtain this statement. So, the moral of the story is the rank of A is the number of non zero rows of R, R was remember obtained as uh, from A by doing row reduction which is the number of dependent variables of R x is 0. Okay. How is this related to nullity? Remember that the nullity of A is the number of independent variables of R x is 0. Okay. So, rank is the number of dependent variables, nullity is the number of independent variables, but well if you have a, a variable either it is a dependent variable or an independent variable. So, the number of of uh, dependent variables plus the number of independent variables is the total number of variables which is exactly n remember it is an m by n matrix. 
So, this gives us the rank nullity theorem that the rank of a plus the nullity of a is n. Why? Because the rank is the number of dependent variables and the nullity is the number of independent variables and we just saw that uh, this sum is the total number of variables which is n. Okay. So, this is a uh, heuristic proof of the uh, or I let me remove the word proof. This is a heuristic for this theorem. Uh, so, this is a useful and uh, and uh, often quoted theorem in linear algebra. Okay. So, with that let us do the final uh, topic that we want to do in this video. How do we check if a set of n vectors is a basis for R n? So, remember that for R n we have a standard basis namely um, uh, the E i s which is 1 in the i th place i th coordinate and 0 is everywhere else. This is the standard basis for R n and we know that the size of any basis is the same. So, the that was what we had called dimension. So, we know that the dimension of R n is uh, n. So, we know that if at all you have a basis it must consist of n vectors. So, now suppose we are given n vectors how do I check whether or not this is a basis. So, here we use uh, the idea uh, from a previous uh, video about linear independence and dependence namely that uh, if you have a set of vectors and you want to check whether or not they are linearly independent. So, if you have for example, uh, n vectors uh, in R n you look at the determinant and that is exactly what we are going to do now. So, that will that will tell you whether or not they are linearly independent, but then the point is if you have if they are independent then you have n linearly independent vectors and uh, they must form a basis because if not one. So, there will be some vector which is not in the span of these vectors which is linearly independent. So, you add that and you can keep doing this process as we did and in the end you after appending a bunch of vectors you will get a basis, but then remember that the dimension will be strictly bigger than n. So, the only way that this is possible is if your original uh, set was itself a basis. So, what is the moral? The upshot is that if you have n vectors it is enough to check that the they are linearly independent. Other uh, way of doing this is to say it is enough to check that they are a spanning set in either of these two cases they must be a basis. Okay. So, how do I check that in this case? In this case it so happens that since you have n and n uh, the corresponding matrix is a square matrix and I can look for its determinant. So, let us uh, let us see how to check this. So, the short answer is use determinants and I sketched out how. Suppose, we are given n vectors of R n we write them as columns of a matrix. So, we will obtain um, an n by n square matrix. If the determinant of the matrix is 0 then the given set of vectors does not form a basis otherwise it forms a basis. So, what it is saying is that in a very large number of cases uh, almost always uh, which has a precise meaning, but we would not say what that is now uh, almost always they do form a basis. Okay. So, what do you have to do to check? you have to compute its determinant. So, let us do examples uh, the quick examples are in R 2 you take the standard basis 1 0 and 0 1 we already know it is a basis. So, let us just check that the statement is correct. So, what is the corresponding matrix is the it is the identity matrix the determinant is 1 and indeed this forms a basis. Okay. So, it is the determinant is non 0 and let us look at the vectors let us say 1 minus 2 and 5 minus 10. So, this yields a matrix 1 minus 2 in the first column 5 minus 10 in the second column and if you look at its determinant it is 0. Of course, we know this because they are uh, linear multiples of each other and uh, as a result this is not linearly independent and so it cannot form a basis. Okay, Let us do this for a slightly more uh, a larger example and a may be a more involved example. So, is the set 1 2 3 0 1 2 1 3 0 a basis for R 3. Okay. Let us form the matrix. So, form a matrix A with columns given by these vectors. So, that is uh, the first column is 1 2 3, the second column is 0 1 2, the third column is 1 3 0. Let us find its determinant. Well, we know how to do this. So, I have just directly done this. So, it is 1 times uh, minus 6 minus 0 times uh, minus 9 which anyway does not count plus 1 times 4 minus 3. 
So, that is minus 6 plus 0 uh, plus uh, 1 which is minus 5 and that is non 0. So, this does give you a set of vectors which form a basis. Let me directly show you that this is indeed a basis uh, by proving that this is a spanning set for R 3. So, let B belong to R 3. So, I want to get a, a bunch of scalars such that a 1 times if I call these vectors x 1, x 2, x 3. So, this is x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3. So, I want to get so need uh, a 1, a 2, a 3 belonging to R such that uh, summation a i x i is b right I want this. So, in other words I want to solve a times a 1, a 2, a 3 is equal to b. Yeah, why is that? Because the first column remember is 1, 2, 3 which corresponds to x 1, the second column is uh, 0, 1, 2 which corresponds to x 2 and the third column is uh, 1, 3, 0 which corresponds to x 3. So, if you write out this equation in terms of the columns, you will exactly have a 1 x 1 plus a 2 x 2 plus a 3 x 3. So, we want to solve this for uh, a 1 a 2 a 3, but now we know a is invertible. So, we know a solution in fact, there is a unique solution. So, unique solution is a 1 a 2 a 3 is equal to a inverse b and why do we uh, I mean where am I getting a inverse from? Well, because the determinant is non 0. So, the inverse exists in fact, we know explicitly how to compute it. The point is uh, that there is a solution right. So, that means a 1 a 2 a 3 exists. So, scalars a 1 a 2 a 3 exist such that summation a i x i is equal to b for any b in R 3. That means, it is a spanning set for R 3 already the fact that determinant is non zero tells you it is linearly independent that means it is a basis ok. So, that is why it is enough to check for the determinant. Let us do one last example in R 4. Uh, so, let us have these four vectors 1 2 3 0 0 1 2 1 1 3 0 2 2 6 5 3 is this a basis for R 4. Uh, what do I do? I make the matrix with these columns uh, put these vectors in the columns. So, in the first column I have 1 2 3 0, in the second column I have 0 1 2 1, in the third column I have 1 3 0 2, in the fourth column I have 2 6 5 3 compute its determinant. Uh, we know how to compute determinants the uh, we will do this by well the easiest way would have been by doing Gaussian elimination or row reduction rather, uh, but let me do it by hand. So, by hand let us do it by expansion along the first row. So, I get 1 times the determinant of the <coughs> 1 1 uh, minor uh, minus 0 times uh, the 1 2 minor plus 1 times the uh, 1 3 minor minus 2 times the 1 4 minor. So, the 0 times part I have removed because anyway I am going to get the un, that will contribute nothing uh, and the rest are written down here. So, you can compute this the first term is 11, second is 0. So, I have removed it altogether. the third term is 11 and the fourth term is 2 times 11 and uh, so this is 0 and as a result the given set of vectors do not form a basis of R 4. Thank you.